كذلك يتم نعمته عليكم لعلكم تسلمون okay. um, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبع بالإسان لا يمدين ما دار اسمت ببراذز فاذز ماذز سوال سيستز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah. May He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant myself and all of you the best of this dunya and the hereafter. Well, welcome to another episode of our weekly sessions. Today we have a very, very important topic. This topic, it is very, very important for me and you as Muslims. And what we're going to do, be idhni Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll have series of this topic, sessions that we're going to talk about on the same topic. Probably we'll have at least 10 to 15 sessions of this topic. Um, the topic, as you all know, the mistakes that we commit. Some people call it common mistakes and etc. But we're going to look at generally the mistakes people commit or make um, during Salah. Some of them could void their Salah and make them not to have um, the reward completely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that fitna. And um, may Ibn Allah ta'ala, what we're going to start you know, on today, inshallah, we're going to start on the, the, the importance of Salah, first of all. Salah. What is Salah? Why Salah? And our obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the regards to Salah. And then after that, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits myself and you all, we move on to the next stage about Tahara. Tahara. Cleanliness. And the mistakes, the common mistakes people do as well make during the time when they perform that obligation that will enable them or we make their so up make them get equipped or prepared to execute that obligation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shoulder upon them. So this will be our topic for today, inshallah. First of all, why salah? Why salah? If I may ask someone amongst us here, I ask why Salah and what is Salah? Who can volunteer to answer? You can put your hand up or you just, um, yes, yeah, someone is raising his hand. I think it's Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, Victoria, can you unmute yourself? I think Victoria's part. Okay, I didn't see it. My uncle host, can you unmute um, Victoria? Someone's pad said Victoria's pad. Is that? Okay. All right, then. Okay, yes, it's here. I can see you putting your hand up. Yes. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa barakatuh. What is salah and why salah? Well, salah. It's the second pillar of Islam. Okay. And it is very, very important mm -hmm. in Islam because okay. Islam is a way of life. It's okay. not just say I'm a Muslim and that's it. Okay. Why Salah then? Why Salah mm -hmm. is, is a form of purification okay. and a forgiveness mm -hmm. and I would say Salah is a foundation of Islam. Okay, that's fine. Can we get one more person? Now the sister has contributed, saying, of course, Salah is way of life and it's means of purification to seek forgiveness. Anyone else? One more person? Don't feel shy. Why Salah? All right, yeah, Sister Mamatu Bangura. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa barakatuh. Why salah? Um, 
I don't know whether I'm right, but I think the reason I think it's Salah because um, it's the first thing you'll be asked about. Okay. On um, on the day of judgment, according to what you what you're teaching us, and also mm -hmm. if you don't perform your Salah, yeah, you'll be in big trouble because Salah is the main thing. That's what makes us. Um, that that's what differentiates us between someone who is not a Muslim and who is a Muslim. The salah makes a big difference between us, and it's like 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 what um C. S. said. It's the way of it's that is the way you communicate with Allah, mm -hmm. and if your communication is not purified with Allah, then you've got question mark. So we have to try to the best we can to make our salah um valid. Mashallah. Um, that, that's amazing. As um, my humble sisters have said, first of all, why Salah? Salah is an obligation ordained and asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create man and the jinn but to worship me. That's the purpose of my creation, your creation. Allah created you to serve him, to worship him, to bow down to him, to call upon him, to put this forehead on the floor. That's why Allah created you and myself. And it is a command. It is a command. If you don't do it, you'll be questioned yawm al-qiyamah. You'll be questioned yawm al-qiyamah. Allah said, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَدَاعُ الصَّلَاةِ he said, after they've admonished them, they preached to them about the importance of salah, the purpose of life. Why do they come to this dunya? Why should they serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The duties upon them until the time they meet Allah, what happens? Some people, they forsook it. Some people forgot about it. Some people ignore their obligations towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many of us we have our homes? We do not even pray. Some. Our family, maybe our children, they are with us in the houses or homes. They don't perform salah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who ignore the salah intentionally, they will be faced with ghay. Ghay is punishment. But it is said is valid in Jahannam. Valley in Jahannam. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about wail. The surah that surah al humaza which probably all of us know how to read. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wailun li kulli humazati, no, surah al ma'un, sorry. He said, Araita levi you kathibu bi deen, fadalika levi yadu uli yatim, wala ya huddu ala to amil miskin, for wailun lil musalin. A shahid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he talked about the mukaddibin, those who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he came to this ayah where Allah said, for wailun, wail. Wail is a valley. Well, when you look at the interpretation or translation of the Quran in English, they will say to you, war, war be unto that person. War be unto you, meaning disaster, calamity, problems. Yeah. But in the, the, the meaning itself, in the hadith, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, Wail. Wail, wadin fi jahannam. Wail is a valley. The wail is a valley in jahannam. The word wail. Where Allah said, for where you learn, there is wail waiting, lil musallin, for those who pray. There is a wail waiting for those who pray. Who are those people? الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who are negligent in their salah. Allahu Akbar. Subhanak ya Rabbi. Now the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said the wail, the wail that has been prepared for those who are negligent in their salah, not those who do not pray at all, huh? those who are negligent in their salah, they pray whenever they want to pray. They when they stand in salah, they don't care. They don't even perfect their salah. And they pray in their own time they pray once in a while without fulfilling the obligation 
they have on their shoulder put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on them. Allah said, the Rasul I'm sorry, he said, he said that valley, if they put the jibal, the mountains of this dunya, and everything in this dunya, they put it in that valley, the valley that is being prepared in the hellfire for those who are negligent in their salah, he said within seconds, everything will demolish. Subhanak ya When did you miss your salah? Then you, you're worried. You become worried. When did you ever see your children, your family, your husband, your brother did not pray in your own household? I'm not saying someone else inside your own household. In your own household, then you become very upset. I'm not telling you to slap them, hop them, kick them. No. But you, you show that you are displeased. With what they've done. When? And some of us, when our children, they go to university, or maybe you send someone, your staff, and here and there to achieve something, and they did not, or do it the way you asked them to do it, you become so upset. But when last did you actually get upset because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But let's start with yourself and myself. When the time of salah has come, the true believer, even if they are at work, they become so confused, torment. Why? Because they haven't fulfilled their obligation to Allah. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Awwal ma yuhasa bihi al-abdu yawm al-qiyamati salatu. When I die, you die. All of us. The first question you will be faced Yom al -qiyama, between you and Allah is your prayer. The first is your salah. You know, the rights, the rights Yom al -qiyama, are divided into two. You have the rights of the servants to Allah and of course the rights of Allah to the servants. And you, write, you have the rights of the servants to his fellow human being as well the rights so when it comes to the rights of allah the rights of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his servants the first question allah will ask you yom al -qiyama, is your salah is your prayer and when it comes to your fellow human being the first question between you and a fellow human being is their blood the blood of that human being so your salah is the first question between you and Allah. The problem is not the salah that is coming that you have not yet observed. No. Right now we've prayed Maghrib in England. Some of our brothers that have joined us or sisters, they are all of in abroad. Maybe they've prayed their salah as well. It can be Asri, it can be Ishaid. We don't know. And it depends. Their time. But the question is, you need to remember and ask yourself, has my salah been accepted? Did I pray to perform it the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to perform it? That's the thing. So, salah is very important, brothers and sisters. It's not about us performing salah, Allahu Akbar which we're going to talk about in series, inshallah, in different, different sessions. Some of the mistakes people do. Very common. And especially within our communities. Some they don't know. Some do not know at all. And I've seen it. So, therefore, brothers and sisters, do not joke with the salah. Do not because when you die, you know, we prayed as Maghrib. Again, I go there. We pray Maghrib. If any one of us, may Allah forbid, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take our life while he is pleased with us, Ya Arham Rahimin. When someone passes away, the first question they will face, they will ask them first of all about the Salah, the Maghrib. If they die between, in between Maghrib and Isha, they will ask them about the Salah that has, the time has passed, that has passed them, you know. 
nor the coming solar. They will ask them. And imagine you're saying to Allah, Allah, I was watching his standards. Allah was watching football. Allah, some of us, we are watching TV. We have our programs. We said, okay, it's within the time of Salah. This, that, within the time, yeah, you know, Isha is from 9, for example. Let's say from 8 to 9. No problem. Let me watch my standards. When I finish, I will pray. Isha, you can delay it. But what about during his standards time? When you are watching his standards, the angel appear. What would you say to Allah, Yom Al-Qiyamah? What about during the time you're watching the football, you don't want to leave it? And the angel, the angel appears. The angel appears. What would you say to Allah? Look at what is happening today in this dunya. Now, the best way for us to communicate with Allah, because Allah did not just put... You know, when, when you have a, like a company, now you are the CEO. You are the boss. You pay them. You pay others. Right? You have to have that channel of communication. If Salah was not there, how would we communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the main channel of communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly to him? It is a blessing for us to have Salah in this ummah, the five daily prayers. Because the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said to the Sahabas, he said, لو كان لأحدكم he said, if any one of you was to have nahar, yeah, have nahar means a fountain, put a fountain, or a river by his house. And then you go into that stream, that river. You take shower, pure shower, good shower, complete one. You take your shower five times a day. Haliyabqa. Will there be any dirt? Any dirt on his body? No. He will not be filthy. He will be cleansed. And he said, Likewise, the five daily prayers. Because it is the sakina or the wasila of sakina, the means of tranquility in this dunya and the hereafter. Not to talk about the grave. So, we should be very observant when it comes to salah. But our family and ourselves, you parents, you brothers and sisters, fathers, you are examples to your children. You are examples to your neighbors. You are role models to those who are below you or under your own supervision. If we want to talk about the importance of Salah, trust me, we'll talk about it until the rest of our life. So it's Fadl. It's a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a blessing to cleanse you and cleanse myself. Now, but however, one will ask, okay, the importance of our creation is to serve Allah. What about the other ibadah? Yes, of course. The other ibadahs, they come after salah. Because after tawheed, after tawheed, meaning to worship only one God, after that is salah. So you cannot establish salah. You cannot perform the salah without pure to heat. No, it doesn't work. It does not work. The iman has to be established first. You have to have that iman. And then you move on to perform the ibadah before Allah accepts it. Do you hear where Allah said in the Quran? He said, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يَتَمَتَّعُونَ وَيَأَكُلُونَ كَمَا تَأَكُلُ الْأَنْعَامِ فَالنَّارُ مَثْوَ لَهُمْ He said for those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They consume, they eat, they get this dunya, but at the end of the day, the hellfire is their own place of abode. Why? Because whatsoever good they do, they do it to get fame. Famous. For them to be mentioned in the media or to be praised. 
Yeah, they do good. Some of them, they look at orphans, but they love when they are praised. Right? When they put it on the news here and there. But for me and you, we do it for Allah. So the Tawheed comes first. That what brings the Ikhlas. Then the Salah. Now let's move on. Briefly. Before Salah, what you have to know is Tahara. That's why we're not going to go straight away into the minor mistakes and here and there about Salah. No. Let's start first from Tahara. Because there is no Salah without Tahara. The Rasul Sallallahu said, لا تقبل الصلاة أحدكم بغير الطهارة. Said Allah will not accept your salah, your prayer. I'm not the one who said it. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. That Allah will not accept your prayer and my prayer without tahara purification. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our salah, ya Rabbi. Allah will not accept it without tahara. Tahara, you get the hadith wal khabath. The hadith is when someone, like they go to number one, people call it, in other words, um, I think number one or number two, I don't know. One of them is to go and ease one urinate, excuse me for language, pee, urinate. And the other one is when, when someone excretes, someone goes to the toilet. Or money, when semen comes out from the person, or sperm, put it that way. Now, the, the khabath, it has to do with the impurity of the physical, the skin, the clothes, or clothes someone put on, and the place of worship, and the things that you wear, sometimes socks. You know, I say to myself sometimes, the brothers in the masjid, I said, sometimes, subhanAllah, some brothers or even sisters, perhaps. I don't pray with the sisters the same, at, the same, at the time for salah, so I don't know. But the brothers, subhanAllah, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. The socks people put on. He stinks. He smells so bad. That they will not put this on when they go to visit the president. Or if the queen calls them for invitation, special dinner. They will never ever dream, not even think, they will never dream to put on this kind of socks. I said to the brothers, I said, if someone comes amongst those brothers, may Allah say for some of them, they stand in salah. When they finish, they leave. If you put your nose there, you will nearly almost get nose, excuse me for long, may Allah say for some of that nose cancer. Because it stinks, it smells, disgusting. Something that you will not do when you meet. You know, those high ones, high wackies. You will not do that. So the tahara is very, very important. They will do. They will do. There is no salah without valid wudu. Brothers, sisters, there is no salah without valid wudu. Now, let me start with the minor mistakes, or let me just explain first the wudu. I believe you know the wudu anyway. But let me go there quickly, briefly. Then we go to the minor mistakes. Common mistakes, not minor. Same common mistakes. Or mistakes people do or make or commit during wudu. One, the wudu has pillars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ma'idah, he said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. He called upon you, the believers. He said, All you who believe, إذا قمتم إلى الصلاة He said, Whenever. قمتم means when you stand. In Arabic, قم, stand. So whenever you stand to perform salah, so standing here, meaning whenever you intend to perform salah. Now, who, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called who? Who are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited here? Allah called 
the believers. He said, yeah, amanu. So the first condition, take it, brothers and sisters, is Iman. There has to be Iman. Right? Faith. You have to have Iman first. Alhamdulillah. We are believers. We are Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Now the second Allah said, Kum tum. When you intend the intention. إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Then the third, Allah said, your faces. These are the compulsory parts of the salah. I mean, the wudu. Compulsory parts. You have to have iman. You have to be a Muslim. Secondly, you have to have the intention. Third, you have to wash your face. Number four. فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ Allah said, you wash your hands. Or your arm up to your elbow up to your elbow then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ and wipe your head then your feet up to your ankle above your ankle this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above your ankle subhanak ya rabbi and then there comes the sunnah part of it. We are to wash three times where it's once. Like the hands. For example, when we start, you wash your hands first. Why? The hadith, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, that whenever you wake up from sleep, what do you do? You wash your hands three times. Wash your hands. Now, the scholars, they're saying, why three times? Hadha amru ta'abudi. This is a command, spiritual command from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course from Allah. Because whatsoever comes to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is from Allah. Allah said, مَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنُهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatsoever the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam presents to you, take it. It's from Allah. And what he forbids you from, abstain from it. It will not benefit you. It will not benefit you, brothers and sisters. Subhanak ya So, when you wash your hands, we wash our mouth. Mad mother. Shake it three times. And the nose. Use your right hand to put the water and then the left to what? To sniff it out. Or sniff the water and then bring it out, sorry. To bring the water out. So you use your left. Some is the same right you put, like, no, the din, the best is, put it with your right, then your left. You are cleaning. And after that, we wash our face. The face is everywhere. Some they just do here in front of it. But we're going to explain, inshallah, when it comes to the mistake of wudu, we're going to go through it, inshallah, thoroughly. Bi'ithnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And after that, you wash your right arm. From here to the elbow, it has to be down. You do like this. Some they just do like that. Khalas. Not to talk about those women who have cutex. We come into that. It's one of the mistakes which makes their salah become invalid because they don't have wudu initially, basically, in the first place. <laughs> There is no wudu for them. Because they have this kitex, or I don't know how they call it, those paints they put on their hands. And some of the worst is not just the paints. They have those nails like tigers. It is not part of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easier for all of us. And the other thing after that, my humble brother and sister, is you go to the left as well. Three times. Then from there you go to the head. Coming this way is compulsory. And this one, which is the second one, is sunnah. And then you go to your right foot. Up to the, above the ankle. Above the ankle. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi talked about it. By the ankle, some of those places are dry. The water does not go there. 
He said, this is part of the Jahannam. You wouldn't want that food to be part of the Jahannam. No. May Allah save us from that. Now, and they said the Shahada. But however, um, I believe, inshallah, I must believe that all of us know how to make wudu, which is basic. But there are a few mistakes I would like to point out before next week. Inshallah, next week we'll go straight to the mistakes. Let me start with the brothers. Especially the brothers. You know, we are seeing the brothers, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed all of us. Different qualities, different potentials. And above all, he has blessed us with the deen. We need to learn about our deen. One of the things, the mistakes that we do when it comes to tahara, before even wudu, is when we go and ease ourselves. Excuse me for language when one go to you in it. You see, <laughs> the trousers they have these days for brothers, men, they sell. Trust me, sometimes if they use those trousers to sit, they will not urinate properly. If they use it to sit down. And that's why it is not compulsory. It is not wajib at all when someone is urinating, a man. To sit down or to stand up. It's not compulsory for him to sit down at all. If the trousers they have cannot make them sit down properly and you in it, then there is a ruling on that. They said, if where you are standing, where you stand is solid and the where the urine goes, is soft, then no problem. You can stand. It's better to stand. But where someone is urinating, is solid, and where they stand, the position is soft, then it's better for them to sit because you bounce back. The most important thing about urinating for man is to make sure that urine does not touch the clothes of their body. Because otherwise, if they touch that clothes, clothes, or that jilbab, or that trousers, or their body, without cleansing it, or cleaning that cloth, then they don't have wudu at all, even if they perform it perfectly. And they rush at ajala. When they go to urinate, they take like one minute, quick. They just wash off and run to make wudu. And some of the remainings comes out at the time they are performing wudu or even praying. So that's why it's good to take a while to make sure that person is completely done before coming out. Even if the salah, because sometimes we rush. I don't want this raka to pass me. I don't want to miss this raka. No, don't worry. Because you must not come to the salah while in ajala, rushing, hasty. No, no, no. That salah is one of the mistakes when you come to the salah. We must not do so. So please, whenever we ease ourselves, take your time. Make sure you are sure that, inshallah, the, you know, the, the, you, you, you finish. You finish. That's one of the most important things we need to know. Right? Now, another thing that I want to start with after that, about the mistakes in wudu. So many questions have come, especially from our Asian community, probably maybe the Africans as well. Some people, they think that every solar, they want to make wudu, or any time, every time they want to make wudu, you will correct me if I'm wrong, they think that they have to Wash their private part first. So many questions. No. You are not. You know. Um, what can I say? It's not compulsory. Or it's not part of even the wudu. 
and not even the sunnah or practices of the Rasul for every wudu you want to make to go and wash the private parts. No. Except, except if, for example, some people, they have this, I think it's the weak blood, I don't know how they call it. Yeah, I think weak blood or something. Whereas they pass urine. It's a sickness. It's a disease. It comes out from them all the time. So, or they pass wind all the time. It's a disease. It's a sickness. Which is being confirmed to be a disease. Then in that regard, if it's urine, that person, it is, I mean, um, um, recommended that they have to clean themselves for every salah and make wudu. They clean themselves for every salah and make wudu. Otherwise, no, they don't need to wash their private parts. And that is considered to be wasting of water. And in the hadith, we all know where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that he used to make wudu, perform wudu with a full of his mood, two hands like this. That's enough for him to perform the whole wudu. All the parts, subhanak ya rab. But for us, we have tabs, we have this, we waste the water, some of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Inna Allah ala yuhibbul musrifin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who are wasteful. So, this is another mistake. The other mistake we do, some of those brothers or sisters who have socks, they put on the socks while they have wudu, which you have to do, because you must not put on your socks and perform wudu on the socks if you did not have wudu when you put on that socks in the first place. So before you put on the socks, you perform wudu. You can put on the socks anyway because you are, you, you are free to put it on and remove it. But when you make wudu, you perform wudu. You can put on the socks. If you want to redo your wudu again, you can. You can wipe over the socks. I have seen so many people wiping all over the socks. That's a mistake. After you put on that socks, you have to wipe, right, your, this, on top of your foot, the socks, not underneath. Sorry, I don't know. I can't. Anyway, this, just take this to be my foot, yeah? This underneath, under my foot. And this is the top. You wipe here, just here. Just here. That's where you wipe. And you are allowed to use that socks for 24 hours. That's fine. If you're not a traveler. Okay? This is one of the mistakes people do. Not only socks, it's the hoof as well. And one of the mistakes as well people do, some places we all know, all the parts of wudu, they wash it three times, three times, three times, three times. All. We all know. Come to the mouth three, of course. They go to the ears. They do it three times. The head, they do it three times. Many people do that. That's a mistake. Learn the deen. And perform the wudu according to the wudu of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to pray as the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa used to pray. And we have to perform wudu as he used to do. Right? And one of the mistakes is sometimes some people, when they're making wudu, right? When they make wudu, they do not, their feet actually, uh, they, 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 they do not pour water or wash in between their toes. You just pour like this. Sometimes in between the toes, the water does not come in. That makes your wudu invalid. That makes your wudu invalid. But what we're going to do, inshallah, this is a session that needs, as I said, a topic that needs many sessions. We'll stop here so far. 
next week so we accommodate questions next week we'll spend time just from the akhtar the mistakes you note them down if you can the mistakes of the wudu they will move on into the salah because we cannot deal with salah without the wudu especially when it comes to salah the first mistake as i can see our culture some people mashallah they think because they are ageable or they are old they have to sit no the first thing you have to know you must stand you only sit if there is a valid reason before allah accept that salah you must stand to perform your salah so anyway inshallah we come into that inshallah we stop here so far because we want people to ask questions and salah becoming inshallah I have passed soon, inshallah. May Allah make it easier. Now. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Sheikh. Yeah, uh, beautiful one. And you, we've got you again. Inshallah, we'll continue with this um, every week. Yeah, every as week. As we said, yeah. next week, we're going to get a lot of questions. But if we start with questions now, I think we're going to explore because we only have three minutes, isn't it? So uh, if they want to ask questions quickly, and uh, you can address it as soon as you can before we, we can... Come is there any question that you want to ask yeah if you can give them five minutes more go we play half here half fast okay please yeah. so we, have, we, have we play we play half fast here so we can Mashallah. accommodate okay, them up to 25 good. fast then khalas. okay that's one, right i have to leave it for next week because there's this um, islam channel is calling the other now so i have to leave mine for next week so i'm alaikum wa alaikum salam okay so is there any other question anyone that wants yes you're back to bangura bismillah yeah um hello yeah assalamu alaikum can you hear me yeah um shak yusuf you mentioned that you like like um you mentioned about the salah about not getting you up with so to pray on time yeah mm -hmm. but um i just want to ask what if because for instance like islam channel yeah after um maghrib say someone is watching i'm watching islam channel question and answers and then they have the break to to pray and call the azan but then after the azan the questions and answer carries on for like 15 minutes another 15 minutes what because sometimes what i do is i just sit there and wait until the question and answer finish and then perform isha is that wrong um actually that's a very good question one has to understand that a believer whenever they are involved in ibadah like watching islam channel they're listening to lectures and then the questions which they want to learn that's considered to be ibadah is a worship so once they are in it immediately after that question and answer because they want to learn then they move on and perform their salah there is no problem especially if they are learning directly from it right inshallah but the salah must not be delayed for anything by the way yeah, Allah knows best. Oh, thank you. Why, yeah, yeah, Lama alaikum, Sheikh Yusuf. Wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Who am I talking um, to, inshallah? Um, Fatima. Okay, so I'm Fatima, how are you now? <laughs> oh, mashallah, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you very much. Yourself, no, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. No, I'm just yeah, what's your question? Um, I wanted to ask, um, do you, does a woman have to cover her feet when she's praying? Yeah, especially when she is in the public. Especially when she is in public and in masjid and etc. She has to. But if they are in their own house where they are not with maharam, I mean, yeah, someone who is not um, supposed to see them with their husband, fala uh, haraj. But once what everyone has to know, a woman, all part of her is naked, according to the hadith of the Rasul, except her face and her hands right so it's recommended as well that in every salah they cover that but in the house inshallah for haraj there is no problem if need be allah knows best exactly. we have uh, well, sister yeah. Anne up sister moro uh, what's your question on mute yourself alaikum 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 brothers and sisters wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my sister it's a um, beautiful lecture. Um, um, so my question is around um, urinary incontinence and fecal mm -hmm. incontinence. Mm -hmm. So you do have people, like you said, they've got illnesses and they're constantly um, passing urine. Yes. Or sometimes feces as, mm -hmm. as well. 
Yeah. Um, and they cannot, you know, help or stop it. It's going to be constant. You know, they mm -hmm. can change, you know, and wash themselves, but it's still continuously, yeah. you know, coming out. Mm -hmm. For these people, and they're Muslims, and they need to pray, um, how does that work in terms of Allah accepting um, their salah? Um, Allah is the one who accepts salahs. I always say, I don't know what Allah accepts, I don't know which he rejects. But um, to fulfill the condition for that salah to be accepted is what they recommend. Of course, the scholars, they said, for those people, they have to perform wudu for every salah. They have to clean themselves for every salah and perform wudu. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then yeah. they pray. That, the, the wudu they have, for example, for dhur, they cannot pray without wudu for asr. Mm -hmm. No. They only they perform for every salah, they perform wudu after cleansing themselves. Allah knows best, inshallah. Okay. Does that yeah. like Karen, so we um we should Imam, stop. Uh, let's look at the chat set well, I'll go to you. Mm. Okay. Inshallah. Okay. Um inshallah, I believe <laughs> this topic would next week we have so many questions. Oh, yes, yes. So many questions because we are we going to get at inshallah it's gonna be lot of questions so try to invite bring your family and others for them to learn from this because this is the most important thing this is the pillar of our deen if this pillar is not established properly then there is no proper foundation for all of us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all well I think we'll come to the end of this session tonight as I've always said keep smiling you're all beautiful and handsome you know if you're with your family at home yeah if you're with your mother or father or brother especially the young ones, look at your mom and say to your mom or dad, I love you. Hug them. And if you are with your husband and wife, mashallah, look at your wife, say to them that you are beautiful and look at your husband. Say to him that you are handsome. Mashallah, I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah reward you all. Keep smiling.